Hello folks, welcome back to DHS Tech Channel. In this video, we're going to look at VMCMS, specifically VMESA 2.4, and how to use the system as just a normal user. This will not cover how to add accounts or how to load the system up. This is just how you actually use the thing, like if you want to write programs for it or just use it in general. So I'm currently sitting here at the login screen, and this is a uh, SNA login screen, so let's go ahead and connect to the system. We'll go ahead and sign in with my user here. Now I should note that this is as any other mainframe system makes heavy use of the tab key. So make sure that your tab key is functional and reachable because without it, you're gonna have a hard time. So go ahead and log in. You'll note that there's a command field down here. Don't worry about this, we'll look at that later. So as soon as you log in, you're gonna be granted with a couple of important things to know. So this thing here, it's gonna tell you if you have any spooled files and we're gonna look at spooled files later, but that's basically how you transfer files to other virtual machine users because really this is a virtual machine running a single user system called CMS and this right here is the CMS loadup prompt that tells you the version and when it was generated in this case I generated it here and then this right here you'll see stuff like this specifically this quite often and this means that we've accessed a disk at address 190 so we're going to take a look at what all that means so go ahead and push enter now if you're sitting here at the quote unquote prompt and you just push enter it's going to alternate between VM read and running in running, you can get output typed back to you. In VM read, you can't. This means that something has triggered the system to sort of acquire input from this terminal. Because this is simulating a typewriter terminal. This is fully line mode. There's no fancy terminal control or anything. This is a very primitive uh, system, if you will. I mean, considering how old it is, it's, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. So we're looking at the CMS prompt. Now, if I keep going, you're going to notice I'm going to get into a bit of a problem. OK, what is this here? Holding more, holding more. What? OK. What you have to do here is figure out what your clear key is. Now, I'm using IBM Personal Communications. This is IBM's, I guess you could say, official terminal emulator. If you're using like X3270 or C3270, try either Control-C or Meta-C. If you're using Vista TN3270, it's probably Control-Insert, and that's actually what the default is here. But I recommend binding it to your escape key, because that's what I'm using. I can just push escape, and that will clear the screen. Because if I just do some command that produces a lot of output, I'm going to be able to need to press that clear key in order to scroll. So the first thing you want to do is figure out where your files are. So assuming that your system has been configured appropriately, if you type in li or just l or list file, I use li because I'm sort of stuck from the Unix world and I want to type ls but that's no good. This will list you your files. So what are we looking at here? Well of course I already have a few files set up here such that I can demonstrate programming, but this is the file name. This is the file type, and this is the file mode. Okay, so we're going to look at what all this means. So if you press clear, there you go. Ready means that you're ready to plug in another command. This is your shell prompt, if you want to call it that. So if I do a li again, and take a look at that, you know that a is, you're only seeing all these files with a. So this is basically your drive letter. So CMS has, if you could call it drive letters, it's the file mode and you can access a variety of disks and directories using the access command and of course before we access stuff we can do a query disk to figure out what we have accessed so in this case I have a few disks that have already been accessed on my system here so this command here will basically print out what you can browse now you're always going to have s and you're always going to have ys Okay, these are important. This right here is your system drive where your CMS system is actually located. And then this right here is your, I guess you call it the equivalent of slash user on a Unix system. It's where all your programs are going to be. Although you may have another disk that has programs on your system. Now, this VDEV thing, this is important. Remember, this is a virtual machine that we're using here. These are all actually simulated disk drives. And we're going to take a look at that in a second. But if you see dir, this means you're using a directory rather than an actual drive. And these directories are being served up by a, basically a secret user in the background called the file pool server. And of course, if we want to display users, we do query names. And you can see here I am logged in here. And here's a actual user. Well, this is actually a service machine. VTAM is a networking system. And I'm sitting here logged in on a logical terminal 7. And over here you'll see like SFS pool one, that's a file pool server and stuff like that. This is well provided directory. So if I do a Q disk again, you can see that all of these are fair game. 
to browse. So again, if I do li, you'll see that there's file name, file type, file mode. So if I only want to list my COBOL files, I just do li star COBOL, and there we go. But if I want to look at everything that's on another drive, because you can see, if I can type, I have a lot of stuff on drive O. I can do li star star O. And you can see there's a lot of stuff. Oh, but great, there's like a trillion pages. I'm going to have to push a lot of clear keys. Not necessarily. If you run a command that has lots of output, type ht. And that will basically hush it. So that's the gist of how files are stored. Now, if you want to see how big a file is, do li star star date or just li date. And this will actually tell you more than just the date. I mean, obviously, it will actually tell you the date. But it will also tell you what the record length is, the record format, and how many records there are. If you want to figure out how big the size is, multiply. And blocks is just how many CMS files and blocks that takes up. So if there's a fixed file that has a record length of 80, and there's 236 records, that means there's 236 lines in this file, and there's no padding between them. Because remember, this is a record-oriented file system, so a variable record file is kind of what we call a Unix file, meaning there's there's no padding at the end of a line. Like after you press the enter key, that is the new line. It's stored as just a contiguous stream. A fixed file has, of course, a bunch of space at the end of each line. So in addition to that, there's also a few networking facilities that you can mess around with as well, and we're going to look at that in a moment. But the first thing we're going to do is figure out how to actually create a file. So the editor that you use on VM is called XEdit, and it's well known for being... I mean, I guess you could say it's about as customizable as Vim or Emacs over in the Unix world. So we can do xedit test file, and right away this is going to throw us into the editor. Now xedit isn't too terribly difficult to use, but it's also not really the pinnacle of easy to use editors. This is a modal editor, uh, because again, this is a very lockstep terminal. There's no way to report the cursor position while removing it, and there's no way to report individual keystrokes. Everything just sort of gets sent all at once when you press the enter key. So what we're going to do here is we're going to type in to go into insert mode. Okay, and so you're done typing. Now you just press enter to get out of that. Now if you want to scroll up and scroll down, F7 and F8 will scroll pages at a time. If you want to get rid of that ugly ruler, do scale off. And then if you want to go down two and you want to insert a line between this and that, there you go. Alternatively, you can tab to all of these too. Like if you want to delete this line, just do D. Alternatively, from command mode, you can type Del. Of course, you can go up and you can do all, all sorts of manner of commands. But if you want to type lowercase, do case M. If I can type, sorry, this microphone's in the way of my camera. I'm sorry, keyboard. There we go. Now we got M for mixed case. And if you want to go back to uppercase, case U. All right, now to save, you can just do save. If you want to save and quit, you can type file. So file is probably the command you want to use. F3 will get out of stuff. And also, if you push your keys on the CMS command line, they don't really do anything. Anything that starts with star is a comment, so you can just press enter here and get nothing. Okay, so let's say we want to actually write a program, because that's what everyone's here to do, is everyone wants to learn how to write programs on VM. Fortunately, I have a variety of programs that are here for the run. So we're going to look at that Cobb test program. So if, of course, if you want to display a file, you just use the good old type command. So there you go. Now, for a fixed file, xedit will automatically throw in these line numbers. Don't worry, it doesn't really affect anything. Everything past this column here is ignored anyways because it expects a line number. So we can go ahead and invoke the compiler. The compiler is called COBOL2, and you just type COP test. Okay, boom. Now at this point, it will have produced a text file. So if I do li date, you can see that this right here is our object file, and it also produced a listing file. And the listing, if we look at that, it's going to be large and cumbersome and of course rolling off the page because it's formatted for a 132 column printer. But there you go. Now how do you actually run this? Well, you have to link it, obviously. But how do you link anything? Is there a link command? 
There is, but it's not for what you think it is. The link command is actually for connecting to other disks from other users. And we'll, we might take a look at that in a second when we look at networking. Actually, we're going to have to take a look at that in order to do networking. Now, instead we used the global command. So we need to, of course, load a text library that has actual like entry runtime objects, because that's what the equivalent of like libc.a is a text lib. So if you could call a .so, a shared object on Unix, you could call that a load lib on VM, and you could call a .a archive type stack library a text lib on VM. So it's a little similar. So we need to actually load that. So we do global text lib S-C-E-E-L-K-E-D, and this is the language environment. That's what S-C-E-E is, and then this is the link editing library. Now we also need a load lib. Okay, at this point we now have our library. It's loaded. Now we can load the name of that text file. Because if we do li star text, here we go. So we can do load cob test. Now if we want to run it, we can start it right away. However, we can also load cob test, and then we can do gen mod. Sorry, that's still selected. Cob test. Now we have a module, and this is actually fully runnable. We can run that over and over and over again, and that's our fully made runnable CMS command. Now, if you want to do a C program, same thing. And if you want to do a PL1 program, there you go. This one produces a lot more output. Oh, okay, apparently this one doesn't actually do anything. Oh, okay, that explains it. Anyway, there you go. So that's how you write programs. And all in all, it's not too terribly difficult. Also, you may notice that there's a mixed case file name here. Don't worry about that. If you get one of these, that means you probably have some interesting software installed. Now, there are other ways to do things on here. For instance, there's a file list rather than a list file that provides a more graphical user interface. So if you're from like the uh, AS400 world or the MVS world where you like your fancy graphics, there you go. This is basically what, this has got your name written on it right here. And you can go over here and if you want to look at load map, X edit it. Boom, there you go. Here's our link map for our PL1 program. And we know it's a PL1 program because IBM, that's the PL1 library prefix. <laughs> And then S uh, C E E. This is common language environment stuff. You see, the magicians at IBM somehow figured out to get COBOL, PL1, and C to all use the same runtime library. Now that's pretty impressive. Imagine if Rust and C++ had the same runtime library. Now, what about printing files and stuff? And I mentioned there were spool files at the start. If we do Q files, huh? What's this? Well, this is actually how you send and receive files to other users. So, for instance, if I log in on another terminal that you can't see, and I log in as the system administration user ID, I can actually send myself a file. Let me find something good to send. Okay, here's a good one. So I can do a command over here that will send a file to me. And I'm going to show you how to do it as well. Actually, why don't I just send a file to myself? That'd be a lot easier. So what I can do is, I don't know what file sysprint is. Oh, okay, I guess this is what we we'll use. So if you want to send a file to another user, you do spool punch, and then that destination user. Since I'm saying it to myself, this will be my user ID. Now we do punch file sysprint and possibly the file mode. We do close punch. At this point, a file was sent to that other user. But if I do Q files, you see I now have two files in my reader. Now I can do Q reader to list them. And you can see in a brief sliver of opportunity there, I did send myself a file from maint. But we want to receive both of those. You can use the receive command. Alternatively, you can type reader list 
for like the user interface you can just the peak command to see a beginning portion of it so here's some script from apparently far back as 1981 <laughs> I actually am not entirely sure what this does I guess we'll find out we'll, tr we'll try running it and then there's this one here that we sent ourselves now if you want to receive them you can just do F9 to receive it alternatively you could type the receive command and then the ID so if I do Q reader of course we have the file ID here now we have this exact command in our disk. We try it, and look at that, it actually works. This right here is a uh, very old program, but it is apparently working. And as you can see, we now have a wonderful, very old, very 1980s looking list. And in this right here, this is actually the path to my, I guess you could call it your home directory, because I'm not using a physical disk. Oops, I did not need that. Now, what is this thing about disks like? Huh? Well, let's do a query virtual or a QV. We can actually list all the hardware on this VM. So, have 128 megs of storage. This is how much RAM you have. This is not how much disk you have. This is RAM. Because in mainframe world, storage is RAM for some strange reason. Well, I guess they call it RAM, or call it memory implies computers could forget things. This right here is the console. This is our simulated reader and punch and also printer. And yes, these are like punch cards, in case you're wondering. And then we have various disk drives. And now, I don't actually own these. I don't actually own any of these. These are all owned by other users and are on other parts of the system. Of course, 190, this right here, this is our CMS system drive. 19D, this is where all the help files are. 19E, this is where all the compilers and programs are. 399, well, this is for Office software, and 592, this is for TCP IP. Now, these two here are not going to be defaultly linked, or that's that's what it's called. These are linked. I don't own these, so I had to link to another user to get them. If I do a detach 592, that will boot the disk out of my user session, if you will. Now, if I do actually want to get at the TCP IP programs, I need to do link TCP IP 592. This is the disk on the TCP IP user ID because user IDs can own disks. It's just I don't own any of these. And then I want to access that as my 592. So there you go. Alternatively, you may want to specify a mode. Like if you want to link to another disk to write, you do link some user 191, 591, possibly multi write. And of course, there's no some user on the system, but 191 is the user's home disk, if you will. Remember, I'm using a directory for a home user, or a home disk, if you will. Also called the A disk. But if this was an older setup that used a physical disk, it would be at address 191. You can also do Q access if you are using these. As you can see, here's my label. This right here is the file pool name. This is user ID, and then dot is like the directory delimiter. Because I also have some directories here. And if you do have directories, you can do access dot test files D. Oops. And there you go, I have a test file in there. And if you have a mini disk, access 592 T. This T is our I guess our TCP IP disk. If you do our Q disk, there you go. This is TCP mate 592. And if I do li star module T, you can see all the programs we can use. There's our C preprocessor, which is for some reason in here. Dig, FTP, uh, LPQ and LPR, LPRM, ping, our exec, telnet, yada, yada, yada. And of course, we can telnet to another host as well. If I do telnet 102, I want to say dot one dot uh, 56. This will connect us to a VMS machine. Note right here, F4 or F16 will get you to command prompt. Also, pressing PA1 will get you to that as well. Now, of course, I don't want to sit here and use VMS. I'm trying to use VM. So to get out of this, press your program attention key. Sorry, not program attention key 1. That's the break key. Press F4. Oh, okay. Well, it booted me out anyways. <laughs> You'd press F4 and type quit. Now, let's talk about what I just did there. Let's say that a program hangs or CMS just crashes. How do you recover from that? Well, you press PA1. Now, PA1 is obviously going to vary on your keyboard. I have mine attached to Control F1 in proper as well in the proper aspect of an actual 3270 keyboard. It would not be on that at all. But you press it, and notice that it flips your prompt over to CP Read. 
This right here is CP is the hypervisor. This is the control program. You can't list your files here. That's not a valid command. You can't get help. You can't get nothing. The only thing you can really do here is restart CMS. So to restart CMS, do IPL CMS. Alternatively, you can do IPL 190, which will load CMS from the disk, although it's a little more memory consuming at that point. So you know how to do TCP IP, you know how to create files, you know how to work with directories. If you want to create a directory, because remember we can do this, we can do create dir.tester2 access.tester2f xedit test to file f save there we go and just like there's a file list there's also a dir list that will show you what your file mode is because if you're writing a program you can't just like f open these you kinda have to go the longer route and uh, manually access them as a file mode this is not a very advanced system I'm gonna be honest with you guys this is very antiquated but once you learn about CMS pipelines, you'll be a, you'll be a changed person. <laughs> All right, so that pretty much does it for this basic intro to VM. Remember, if you, in Unix, everything's a file. In VM, everything's a device. I mean, we got card readers and card punches and all sorts of stuff, and it just becomes sort of messy. And of course, here's all of our disks. But that's the gist of it. Of course, log off the system. Log off. There you go. So I'll make a couple more videos on other aspects of VM, but that, that'll be it for this round. Have a good one, and be safe out there.